Good evening. Things are coming to the boil in this little crucible theatre and how. It's act two of a four-part drama this evening in our Betfred World Championship final. And our main characters know what it's like to receive the accolades on this grand little stage. They are the stars of their respective generations. It's Ronnie O'Sullivan against Judd Trump. If I didn't think I could win this tournament, I probably wouldn't play it. I don't regard myself as the greatest. Years ago, I think I just took it for granted, you know, that I'd be playing this game forever. I kind of realised that that's not going to be the case now. You just kind of embrace it a bit more, have fun with it. I'm in a better place now with it than I was maybe 15, 20 years ago, you know? I didn't really expect anything from myself this past couple of weeks, so to be here is a bit of a surprise to me. My form wasn't great coming into this event, and. It's kind of probably written off a little bit, gone under the radar, but I've just been able to feel my most comfortable on the big stage. And Judd's a great lad, do you know what I mean? He's, he's done brilliant in the game. You know, the last three years, he's really knuckled down. He is a true champion now. He was always kind of um, a hero of mine growing up. I always wanted to play him in the final of the World Championship. This is kind of a dream come true to finally get to play against him in the biggest tournament in the world. I'd rather play well and lose than play rubbish and win. So my biggest fear is going out there and not performing well and kind of feeling like I've let everyone down that's come to watch. To be sort of remembered amongst the greats, you have to be winning this event multiple times. So just to be in another final um, against one of the greats of the game is, is going to be another tremendous occasion. I'm feeling every emotion that you would feel if you're putting your heart and soul into doing your best, you know. Life will just continue whether I win or not, but yeah, it would be great to have the, uh, the trophy on the cabinet for another year. Yes, the world number one, Ronnie O'Sullivan, could become the oldest ever world champ at the Crucible at the age of 46 and is, of course, still on track for a milestone record equaling seventh world title. But his flamboyant young opponent, the 2019 Crucible King Judd Trump, has his own agenda. Might he realise his ambition to be a multiple world champ? It's Judd who's had Ronnie's number in finals recently, winning their last four at, since 2018. But it was Ronnie who burst to the front in this afternoon's opening session here. Um, yeah, I really can't wait for this best of 35. That's a good starter. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> what a start for Judd Trump. Oh, this is a difficult pink. And in it goes, and what a response from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Oh, my goodness. Ronnie O'Sullivan leads by two frames to one. Pink and black for a respot. Judd in his seat. And Ronnie O'Sullivan extends his lead. And then it goes. Ronnie O'Sullivan is on fire. Judd closes the gap, but he's still 
trails by five frames to two. You better run. Why is it so hard? Olivia Marto just not... having a word with Ronnie. Angels, He's got it. He kept his concentration. Jump Trump has taken those two frames, but he still trails by five frames to three. And 1991 world champ John Parrott is surveying the scene with us here. What a scene and what a session this afternoon, John. Well, if that was the aperitif, we can look forward to the main course. That was an unbelievable session of snooker. It had everything. It had respotted blacks, cocked at doubles in the middle, and then a little bit of controversy. A little bit of controversy at the end, indeed, in that eighth frame. In fact, it has been confirmed earlier on that Ronnie has received an official warning from the referee following a gesture he made in the last frame. So, firstly, John, how well did Judd Trump do to focus on that yellow and indeed closing out the eighth frame in those circumstances? Brilliantly. Absolutely brilliantly to go back. I mean, obviously went back, composed himself, came back, knocked a fabulous yellow in and made the clearance he needed to. And what a comeback from 5-1. He did brilliantly well there. But from Ronnie's point of view, I wonder how he'll respond because he's been so composed, so unruffled throughout these last mm. couple of weeks. How do you imagine he's going to respond to that today, I John? I think it was a good, good, the session finishing there was a good thing for him, gone away, he'll, he'll regroup. I know Steve Peters is a sports psychiatrist here, he'll probably have a good chat with him. I think it'll all be under the carpet now, he'll wash that away and come out and start again from afresh. OK, there are nine frames to play in this best of uh, 35 frames match this evening. A long, long way to go. We've got mm. all of uh, Bank Holiday Monday to go as well but from your point of view as a guy who's been in finals before what were you hoping to achieve on this first evening of the final well you'd love to have a lead but what I will say is when you've got two players like this who both think they can beat each other you are gonna have tranches of frames that are gonna be won by one player and you're gonna sit and watch you just sometimes got to wait for your turn there will be bursts in this match someone will have the cue ball more than the other Who's going to have it and when it's coming, I don't know, but that's what makes it exciting. Well, it's been a long couple of weeks, especially for these players. I wonder how much is left in the tank. Probably a huge amount. But this is the 14th time that they're going to have to go to the well and prepare themselves of the last 16 days uh, for the backstage wait in the crucible corridors. There is Judd Trump. But they know that a wall of noise awaits them as they get their cue from our master of ceremonies, Mr. Rob Walker. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to a match we might still be talking about decades from now. The two finest of their generation, on the biggest stage of all, for the biggest title of all. This has got the makings of a massive night at the Crucible. So welcome back to the 2022 Betfred World Snooker Championship Final. Please welcome the outstanding performer of the last three seasons. Decades after his dad drove him to all those tournaments, he is ready to deliver once more for his family, for his friends. He is desperate for a chance to become a multiple world champion. The one and only ace in the pack, Judd Trump. <laughs> And now to the greatest player in history. For 30 years, he has been Snooker's box office draw. And here he is, bidding to make it a magnificent seven at the Crucible, the one and only Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan.
So settle back on your Sunday evening. It's a long weekend and there's still a long way to go in this brilliant final. Let's say good evening to the still standalone king of the crucible, Stephen Hendry, and the king of the commentary box, John Virgo. Hello, gents. Hi, Hazel. Good evening, everybody. Well, I'm sure the atmosphere is coming through your living rooms at home. It is absolutely electric. It's a dream final. It looked at the beginning and it certainly started that way. Big second session, nine frames. Looking forward to this seven times. Yeah, Thank you, the ninth frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. I always felt in the four session final, this first evening session was when the, the final really kicked in. Yeah, there's a big mark on the table. Oh, there's Ronnie just getting rid of it. But yeah, this uh, this could play a big part in who goes on to win this World Championship this session tonight. Yeah, very well played that from Judd. And of course, nine frames tonight. So somebody's going to win this session. Judd obviously would love it to be him. He's playing catch up. He's done well to be only 5 3 behind after that first session. Nice line back to the ball can from Ronnie, but a bit pacey. Wanted to find the ball cushion, not the ball line. This red is available. Yeah, it's one we're going to see a signature. Judd Trump, long pop, screw the cue ball back up the table for blue or bolt colour. It was mighty close. Played it that way, thinking the only red he could leave was the one he was playing. Not far off target. Mm. Yeah, well, as Ronnie played that, and he was walking past Judd, and Judd said re rack. Both players agreed. Don't want to get involved with this tippy tappy. So as you can see, a few shouts. Come on, Ronnie, come on, Judd. That's one of the improvements, isn't it, in the game in the last sort of 10, 20 years, that yeah. the players decide the re-rack quickly. It's common sense. Yeah, we're in the business of entertainment. And tip-tapping about isn't really going to entertain anyone and really goes nowhere at the end of the day. So nice to see. Olivia Martyr was quickly set up the Reds. Thank you. Thank you, the ninth frame for Neil Sullivan to break. Decent break off shot. I don't know whether Judd can get past the blue for the red on the left hand side of the table. He can. Whether you play the pot or not, depends on what the potting angle is, but it's a chance. Oh, the cue ball's gone in off, the ball have been and the red's going towards the bog. The bog end, easy starter for Ronnie. Yeah, his, his long game's been inconsistent. 
unpredictable, the whole championship. And, well, this final, I think if he doesn't find it, he's going to struggle. Wow. Oh, what a gift for Ronnie Sullivan in this first frame of the evening. Yeah, just as you say, it's a long game and it needs to improve, you feel. But he was a long way out with that. Well, I think he relies on that long game to intimidate Six. opponents and really put pressure on their safety. And if they're not going in, he's just not going to be able to put pressure Seven. on Ronnie O'Sullivan. I just got the angle here. He doesn't know where to play the cannon. It looks perfect, but it can go wrong. He could play for the red near the right corner, but then the black's only available into one pocket. He'd love to move this red to the left of the black. But decided it was a bit risky. He's on this red to the right corner, one to the left middle. 14. Yeah, it's a big... 15. You notice the way Ronnie break builds these days. He doesn't play, unne doesn't take unnecessary risks. Anything that could go wrong, he leaves alone. There was two or three times this afternoon where he did the same. He had a chance to play cannons to bring colours into play or for Quinn. position. But he avoided taking an unnecessary risk. And has he got the angle this time 21. on the black? Mm, looking at the body language. Facial expressions, maybe landed in exactly the same place again. Maybe slightly more angle makes this shot easier. Try and push the red towards the left corner. Yeah, and that's the reason he didn't do it the first time. It can go wrong. 28. Tricky queuing that was. I still expected him to get it, but he'll be disappointed. Those are the sort of situations throughout the whole championship. Ronnie's really taken advantage of. Very rarely goes back to his seat, and the frame is still live. So the first shot is the key shot. He's got to swing round the back of the black. Played it perfectly. Good shot. One. This is a huge visit to the table for Judd Trump. It really is. He's won the last two frames. He's got a bit of momentum behind him. And the fact that Ronnie hasn't taken advantage of that chance. 16. What an opportunity. 17. Yes, and of course, those reds, clusters in the middle of the table. We have to bring those into play. So there's going to be one 20. cannon that could win or lose you this frame. Twenty-five. He'll be a little bit annoyed there if he's straight on the blue. He wanted an angle to get close to his next red. Maybe just be able to pinch a little bit. He could. He's getting very close to that stage where he needs Third. an angle on the colour. 
to go into that cluster of five. Thirty-one. Yeah, and you'd, you'd prefer to be hitting the right-hand side of the two reds, the right one, as we look. The left one you could stick on. Well, I played it perfectly, though. Put it in a power <laughs> to control the cue ball in the middle of the table. That was beautifully played. Thirty-eight. So four of these remaining reds Four required, six. three of them with colours. Looks easy enough. Forty-seven. The first frame of any session can set the tone 54. for the rest of the session. That's why this is so important for Judd, this visit. 55. Quick lens at the scoreboard. After this black, another red of colour and one more red. Okay. 62. There you see it, 30 ahead, 51 remaining. Well, Ronnie had his chance. Funny, he refused to play the cannon the first time, landed up in exactly the same position, and that time decided to play the cannon. A little bit of impatience, maybe? Well, I mean, it wasn't that difficult a cannon, to be fair. I mean, he didn't want to do it the first time. It's not the kind of cannon you expect Ronnie to get wrong. It looks for all money now. It's cost him this frame. Mm, Needs that cue ball to travel. That's very careless. It really is. Seventy. Is there a twist in this frame yet? Very poor shot from Judd Trump. Didn't have a lot of angle in the black, so why not play for the red to right middle? But even so, if you're playing for the red in the corner, can't believe he's finished this short. 71. But no problem, in he goes. And that puts him 39 points in front now, with just 35 remaining. One snooker needed. I want to pop this red. I lost the fourth frame to date when Ronnie needed a snooker. I want to kill this off right now. 73. Yes, this red will keep Ronnie in his seat. Well, he missed it, Good and he from. missed it by 70. a long way. But, nice lead, 41 points. 35 remaining. Two four-point snookers needed. Yeah, it was a very tentative attempt at that last red. There was no position played. It was almost like just desperate to pot the red.
probably had an idea there, playing that red down, if he could knock the black to the cushion, it wouldn't be a snookering ball, but... Uh, I was only seeing this. He's got a good line here. Pink and blue. He's got the snooker. Sullivan's four. Well, no miss can be called because we're in the snooker's required stage, but he could well have left a free ball there. Can't call a miss. Oh, sorry. Play again. <laughs> Thanks. And the referee's feeling it a bit out there, if I'm being totally honest. It's a big, big occasion for Olivia Martu. He's refereed a world final before, but doesn't make it any easier. Now just one snooker needed. So this is the red. Now when Judd lost the frame today in the snooker, he did a similar thing with the last red. He decided to just make sure of the pot and not play position and missed it and lost the frame. He did the same there. I mean, he was on a century break. Why not play a shot position for the black? You know, if it costs him the frame again, he's not going to be happy. No, but Ronnie's not. I don't know if it cuts in the middle. It may do. Well, he didn't want to play the pot, so... And, and it's a good thing if somebody needs a snooker. If you can snooker them, they're not... Highly unlikely they're going to get one in the escape, and he's got a snooker. <coughs> Thing is now that Ronnie only needs one snooker. If he gets a chance, he would pot the red and maybe play a snooker on the yellow. That's where he starts snookering. When you've got one red on and two snookers, you try and play for a free ball. But this is a good line by Judd. <laughs> Trying to catch a thin edge, caught it much too thick. Now there's a chance for Judd. To dot the I's, cross the T's, which he will do if he pots this. Right in the heart of the pocket. One. Ronnie O'Sullivan had that first chance. Didn't take it. And there are the frames that hurt when you know you've had a chance. Judd needed a, a good start. And he's got one. Seven. Nine. <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, I'd be mightily relieved to get this first frame one. Sixteen. Three frames in a row for Judd Trump. Perfectly, using 21. the bump of the middle pocket. <laughs> Not bothered about the black. So, as I say, he needed a good start, and as Stephen said in the grand scheme of things, that's three frame in a row. 5-4, Ronnie O'Sullivan. 
It is indeed, and I'm delighted to say that we also have Sean Murphy, the 2005 World Champ, joining John and I in the studio here and joining everybody at home. I hope you're enjoying this. Um, first of all, Sean, um, Judd, a, a sort of contrast in long reds at the beginning and the end of the frame. This one he probably won't want to remember at the start. <laughs> yeah, we queued it up here. He's been struggling with reds like this when playing with stun. And this was, you know, in snooker terms, was a mile away. Uh, and of course got the in off on the second red and then the red tracks back to the balk end of the table he'd have expected to lose the frame from there interesting John that when you look at the stats in this match 59% long potting for uh, for Judd and 65% overall for Ronnie O'Sullivan that appears to have been a real difference between the two of them throughout the championship but from Ronnie's point of view it was a poor position strangely yeah I actually thought you know the first time he looked at it and he refused it and things and it's unusual for Ronnie to actually get this wrong. I mean, usually his cue ball's mm. as good as anybody who plays the game. But once he's got that contact, you know, straight away the red's coming towards the cushion, he's lost it. And then, of course, he plays the red in the middle, but he'd be kicking himself. First mm. opportunity in tonight, and those balls, he's been clearing up from those most of the championships. Yeah, and already a bit of a change in momentum in this match. Remember, Judd Trump was 5-1 down, and he's creeping back into this. Absolutely, yeah. Now, earlier on this afternoon, it looked like it could be a runaway for mm. O'Sullivan, but he's done very well, Judd, to uh, dig himself out of a bit of a hole. And he's right back in it. Yeah, can he get himself back on terms? This is frame 10. Thank you, the 10th frame. Judd Trump to break. Not a bad break off. Anything that doesn't leave a attempting pot for your opponent, you've got to be thankful for. There's one red on the right hand side of the table, but tough pot, and you couldn't get position off it. Well, I didn't like that, so it looks like he's just playing the containing safety. It just shows you what respect which, which both players will have. Ronnie didn't want to play off the pack because he thought, well, I could leave to the chance of a long red. In the yellow, normally not ideal, but on the face of it, no harm done. Very good. Very good. Ronnie coming down this end of the table, seeing if he can leave the cue ball near this top cushion. Because just looking at the way the, the balls are laying, uh, you wouldn't fancy trying to get back to bog. Yes, when Ronnie or Sullivan takes this long to decide a shot, you know he's got a problem. And sometimes in this situation, you might see a player thinking, right, I'll pot, try and pop my way out of trouble. That's not an option here. 
Got to find a safe place for that cue ball. I can't see one. Switch it off, please. To be so precise. Yeah, it was a wonderfully played shot. Slightest bit thick or thin with the contact. And he would have guaranteed to let Judd Trump in. Now it's Judd that has to answer the question. May choose, knowing, knowing the way Judd plays, and may choose to pot himself out of trouble here. But we've seen a similar pot in the last frame, missed by a long way. Yeah, so if he does go for it, the pressure will be on it. Didn't play the pot. Played a lot of right hand side to hit the red thin off the side cushion. But didn't get any pace in the cue ball. Chance for Ronnie here to force on the advantage with a good safety. Thank you. So, the poor safety from Judd, the good one from Ronnie, has forced the error. Yeah, but judging by Ronnie's body language, he's not left a red pot. Yeah, you, there you see it. If he could get his hand on the table, I think he could play a little swerve, but he can't do that. So trying to knock one onto the other. Well, Ronnie will be disappointed that he wasn't left a path to that red over the pocket, but that's the game. Run of the ball, favoured Judd there. Switch your phones off, please. Mm. 
Mm, was this? No, it didn't. I thought it was a perfect line if it had run a bit further. He could have sneaked behind the green. Now, is there a red on to this right corner? Can he get through the gap of the three reds to the one in the middle? Well, he's looking at something else. That's good. That's very good. And even Ronnie, little tap on the table, appreciated that one. Excellent. Caught the bump of the middle pocket. But I don't think there's any way you can get to a red for the right corner. It's all getting very congested down here. Shows you how sometimes the balls dictate a frame because neither player would like a frame like this. No, I'm, I'm surprised Judd hasn't. The two reds on the right cushion. I'm surprised he didn't think of maybe going for the one that was farthest away from the cushion down to the right corner with an element of safety there. Could have screwed the cue ball easily back. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, it doesn't matter how badly you hit a safety shot, you're not going to leave anything at the moment. <coughs> yeah, it's almost impossible to be left a pot now. Could be here a while. Pretty good. And the last two reds towards the right corner, I'm not sure if they're a plant. So, depending on what red Judd can hit now, then you see they're just going to the right knuckle of the pocket. But there could be a few reds moving after this safety shot if Judd's playing for a red in the middle of all the reds at the right side of the table. chance of playing safe down the right hand side of the table you could go thin off that red that's closest to the black but you could knock it towards the left corner hit it too thick you could career it into the pink or another red so the fact he's looking like this he's thinking of playing just a containing safety He tried to come off the top oh, no, cushion verse. That was a bit advanced. <coughs> and I think, well, I don't know, has it run? Oh, well, we're not, we'll never know. Obviously, Ronnie 
wouldn't have been able to get through to this red. Yeah, trying to come off the top cushion with a trace aside just to clip one of these reds to get back to bulk. Yeah, Ronnie, thank you. one more go at it. If he doesn't get it right this time, remember, if you can see the object ball full, if you notice it first two attempts, you get warned. He'll now get warned. Foul and a miss. Ronnie O'Sullivan, foul. If he misses this time, he forfeits the frame. If I have to call a foul and a miss again, you lose the frame. Of, come on, Ronnie, but I don't think there's much that you can go at. The red that's closest to the cue ball would pot to the left middle, but there's no way you can get on a colour. Wondering the way he got down the red as closest to the pink. Can he see enough of it to play the cut to the left middle? Maybe he can. No, he can he? He's got it. And he may even be on the black. Sullivan won. Well, fortunately for Roni, he didn't travel far enough with a cue ball. There's a red that is potable to the right corner. Yeah? Free rack. Well. Well played, lads. Well played. It was going nowhere. Yeah, it's funny enough just talking about that, Stephen, and the way the balls were. But when Ronnie potted the red in the left minute, you know, you say he's on the black, but it's so difficult, though. It looks so easy, don't they, on the screen? Yeah, well, that fourth frame today when Judd had ball in hand to pot the green off its spot into the right middle, I mean, it used to be a gimme, that one. Mm. You know, maybe the other side, obviously, ball in hand, yellow off the spot, but now it's, it's such a tough shot. There's so very little with the pocket sticking out. Because uh, Stephen Maguire told me that he actually, if he had the yellow ball in hand, he plays for the yellow in the corner pocket now instead of the middle. Yeah. Because yeah. it's so difficult. Yeah. Well, there has been talk, hasn't there, in recent years, that the, the corner pocket seem to be playing a little bit easier, but if you're gaining one, you're losing the other. I suppose <laughs> that could happen. Anyway, ten stuff out there. Thank you, tenth frame, Judge Rantabrick. Yeah, tenth frame, take three. Can get through to this red on the right hand side of the table, but can't pot it. So just playing a shot, just leave this cue ball near the top cushion. Foul 
Kind of miss. Hmm. A bit careless. Try to run fat. Just trying to bend it round the blue so he could hit the red a bit fuller. So careless to hit the blue. Don't see any value in having this replaced. Close to the reds. Should enable him to play a, a good safety. Possible pot. Shot to the system, that one. One. Twenty on seven and one. Red going towards the corner, needs a bit of cover. I think he's got it with another red. There you see it. And the red spread. Big moments in this frame now. Yeah, this is a... This is the kind of shot that if you get it, wow, what a boost of confidence it gives you. You just feel invincible, but if you miss it and your opponent makes a frame and break, then obviously a huge dent. But this is very, very tough match snooker at the moment. Decent chance of this, pink in the open. Black not really available at the moment. What? Oh well, it does pass the red. Didn't look like from our position. So a simple positional shot. Yeah, it clearly goes. Now, interesting to see where the black goes now when it's respotted. Is it going to be available? Eight. Maybe to the right corner. But as I say, he's got pink and blue in the open. Nine. Yeah, it was interesting that safety shot. Judd played the, the fact that he turned down a sort of mid range pot to the right corner because that's the way he used to intimidate players by going for those and getting the, the large majority of them. I'm not sure in this final if he's going to be able to outplay Ronnie in the safety department. But if 
he can get his long game together and intimidate Ronnie that way, 15. put pressure on Ronnie's safety, then that could be the way to win this match. 16. Easy to say this from up here in the commentary box, but that's the way Judd used to play. Twenty three. Twenty four. <coughs> Lovely little cannon. All the 31. reds he needs are in the middle of the table. 32. Just little soft stun screws. Keep tight control of the cue ball. 39. Wanted to be straight on this red, just to roll it in for the black in the opposite corner. Obviously, he's not got the angle. There you see. So deciding to play for the oh. yellow. Forty-two. Forty-three. There is a red, those three. Red, one below the pink, two to the right. The right hand one will go to the left middle. Which was handy, because he didn't have a good angle on that black. Fifty. Fifty-one. Hmm. Well, they always say get up and get back down again. He's making this hard work, this black. No problem. Played it beautifully in the end, but it was just a little bit of hesitancy there. 58. Yeah, but that was a good lesson to anyone who wants to learn match play snooker. He didn't feel right, so get up, reset. There's obviously something in his eye line in that corner of the crucible, putting him off. 59. So this black to go 61 points in front with just 59 remaining. Wanted to get a little can on that red. One snooker 66. needed, but Ronnie knows if he pots this red, he should keep Judd in his seat. Not encourage him to play for a snooker. Oh, but it didn't go in. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 66. Hmm. This frame ain't over yet. One. 
Mm. He'll be disappointed with that. It's a tough pot on the black. If he doesn't get it, he'll concede. Like the red before, didn't so drop. One. So I suppose Judd walking back to his seat. It's the etiquette. You don't concede when it's your opponent's turn at the table, but I don't think you'll carry on much longer. One. But well, certainly not now. Thirty-two. Thirty-seven. Forty-three. Fifty. was a long one, but an important one. Judd Trump refused a long pot for a more difficult safety. Was it the right decision? It cost him the frame. He's two behind again. 6-4. Well, it's interesting to think that Ronnie O'Sullivan hasn't beaten Judd Trump in a final since November 2017. It's been a long time, guys. And uh, as I was saying at the start of the programme, it's Judd who's been in the ascendancy in these finals. But he's trailing by the two just now. And there was a mistake there, guys, that uh, was his undoing in this frame. Yeah, there was a few little mistakes here or there. We just queued up this yellow here because he was in first, potted a nice shot to get to this stage. And you can see he's trying to play for the red nearest the black. Um, you know, we don't use the word unmissable. But that was as close to unmissable as you can get. And, you know, all, all but for that shot, that frame could have taken a very different trajectory. Indeed. Uh, John, when we think back over the last few years and the way that Judd has been the number one, he's been the star in the ascendant, he's been the guy who basically has, has wiped the floor with so many of the players, 14 big titles in the last three years, and yet he's considered in some respects the underdog here. It's mm. a strange old game, the way things change. Well, he's playing arguably the greatest players ever picked a queue up. That's why. Uh, and he's in good form. And it was interesting, the last little exchange there in the safety play, he wasn't getting the better of Ronnie. I mean, that session he played with John Higgins yesterday, some of the best stuff I've seen for a long time with the pair of them. You'll have to be up very early in the morning to put it over on Ronnie in the safety exchanges, so he's got that. The one worry I have here for Judd, and, I, and, I, and I, we've been saying it all through the his long game is nowhere near firing enough. And it's generally when he's having to play with force or stun or screw them, and it's causing him, he's causing himself problems with it. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Yeah, going back to that red that I thought Judd would take on when he eventually made the mistake with the safety that let Ronnie in. If you're Ronnie, you're delighted to see that your opponent not confident in taking those on. Especially someone like Judd Trump.
Yeah, basically, these three ways you create chances in this game. Good safety, force your opponent into a mistake. Your opponent missing when he's in. Or you put in a good long pot. So if that aspect of the long potting is out of Judd's game, then uh, he's going to struggle. And in that last frame of Steven Sell, I'm very surprised he didn't take it on. I mean, I know he doesn't, maybe not confident to get it, but you can't give that signal to your opponent. It takes so much pressure off the safety. Is he playing this right to left middle? Cannon the black towards the left corner. I would say it takes very few unnecessary risks running in his game. He had a couple of reds he could have gone for there. He's keeping it tight. Excellent return to the ball can from Judd. Problem always is with this shot. You sometimes like to play it thin so you don't open the reds too much. But then there's always a chance of catching the bump in the middle pocket. But he played the, the loose red. Bit pacey. <coughs> Just cover the possible pot into the left corner. Well, and a miss. Does mm, this red? Two reds, just to the left of the black. Does the right hand one pot? I assume not. If it it did, Ronnie had been down playing it. Now, from where he was, he just didn't have the enough of the red to hit. It was a good line that from Judd. Just needs a bit more pace. Judd, Ronnie. Sonny Stephen, isn't it when you were saying earlier on you always felt this second session of a final was a big one and you can see that in the shot selection, the way they're playing. These are massive frames tonight. Who will have a lead? Will there be a lead? Going into the final day.
Well, a chance again for Judd to be aggressive. Chance, choice of reds to either corner pocket. Obviously, both. Obviously, fraught with a bit of danger and not easy to get position on a colour. Not the easiest chance this. Yeah, you can see his reaction. It's gonna be hard to even get on a red here, you think. You can can in the the right hand side of the, the two reds beside the black, but not sure where the black's gonna be respotted, so the pocket really had to nip the cue ball nicely there to get that cannon and get the cannon so softly that he remained on the red now is the black going to be avail available to the left corner eight mm, I don't think so the red is but I don't think the black pots and it's a very, very delicate cannon to pot the red that's touching the black and, and keep the black on for the same pocket. This is delicate. Nine. Mm, it's okay, but uh, we've seen the last two weeks how tricky these can be. The one thing going for him is he doesn't have to play at a lot of pace. So he can give the pocket every chance. But that's nowhere near, I'm afraid. Nowhere near. And he's left an angle in the red for Ronnie to pot this and screw into the reds, guaranteed to be in the black. That was a big shot for Chad Trump there. One. Yeah, and it never was in. And uh, he was up immediately. No bad contact. Just a poor miss. As you said, Stephen, I mean, we, we see those balls knocked in, and I'll go back to Mark Williams and his match against you. was knocking Eight. those balls in, but they're so tough. They really are. You can catch anyone out. Nine. Yeah, but when you're playing the game at this level, those are the chances that you've got to have to take if you're going to win this final against Ronnie O'Sullivan, who's playing at the top of his game. No one yet has been able to put any pressure on him. And if Judd misses those chances, he's not gonna be able to either. 14. Fifteen. Played that nicely. There's two reds immediately above the black, just to the right. I'm sure the right hand one is available, so a little cannon. Well, I, 
Well, I only assume both of them go, because I don't think he can get through to the right hand one of the two. They both went. 23. Wasn't too bothered about getting the perfect angle on the blue. Having a red in that end of the table is handy. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. That should be the frame winner. 43. All the reds he needs in the open. 43. Frame in his mercy. Just having a look at Judd in his chair and his ladies. If you want. His hand and his face, rubbing his face. He was a, just, he'd be dejected a little bit at the moment. Got himself back to one frame behind. But now, well, it looks like he's going to go back to three frames behind. Ronnie shaking his head, his wrong side of the blue. Looks like he's going to leave the red from distance. Yeah, he played a little positional shot of the black and kissed the red he didn't intend. Can he miss the brown? He has missed the brown. What's the line like? It's absolute perfection! 56. Seven. Yeah, if you're Ronnie Sullivan, you're loving this at the moment. You've seen Judd turn down a long pot in the last frame and then show more weakness by missing that red along the cushion. It just fills you with more confidence. 64. When you can sense that weakness, you want to power on in this second session 70. and try and build yourself an unassailable lead in this final. 71. Still six frames to go tonight, but the momentum is back with the world number one. I'm sure he'd love to make a century break for this Pat Crucible crowd. Knocking the red away from the cushion will do nicely. Pink, and then his guaranteed position. So, century coming up. 85. 86. He's already made career centuries, 1,168. 91. 93. Thank you. 96. And this Brown for his third century of the match. to say at the moment, 
feeding off Judd Trump's mistakes. That black along the cushion, it was tough. But as Stephen said, at this level, you can't afford to miss when you're in. 111. But take nothing away, this was cue ball control at his finest. In goes the black. And Ronnie O'Sullivan now in top, top form. Three in front, 7-4. Well, the century count is claiming that was the 106th so far, and as you can see, only two away from the all-time record at the Crucible of 108 set last year. Significantly, too, that's Ronnie's 15th of this championship, and he is creeping ever closer to another record jointly held, actually, by Stephen Hendry and Mark Williams of 16 in one championship. So all kinds of records are under threat today. But when we talk about Trump in that match and in that frame, John, and... It's so debilitating when your errors are as comprehensively punished as they can be against Ronnie. Yeah, and this is the first sign, I think, of him realising that this was a massive pressure shot. He, he knew full well this was either muck or nettles. This had to go in <laughs> or he was in big trouble. And he knew full well playing that. And the, not only has he missed the black, he's left an angle that can screw into the pack, open the reds out, and he's had to sit in his chair. Are you sensing pressure building on Judd now? Yeah, definitely. Oh, there's no question about that. Three frames behind, you know, it's like holding a tiger by the tail, <laughs> holding on to O'Sullivan sometimes, you know, unless you can get ahead of him early, uh, which Judd hasn't managed to do. Just wondering with that black, you know, bit of professional courtesy, it might give him the benefit of the doubt, might have been a heavy contact, just with where the cue ball finished on the red. But I take John's point, you know, maybe a sign of pressure. Only he would know. Mm, Ronnie seems very dialled in, very composed tonight. Right from ball one of the championship, Hazel. Right from ball one. He's been focused the entire tournament. He has. He's beaten Dave Gilbert and Mark Allen, Stephen Maguire, John Higgins to get here. And he plays the world number four, Judd Trump. Mid-session interval after this frame. I'm sure Judd would like to go in to that dressing room as you were as he started the evening. That's the pot success. I always think that that is the big one. 94% for Ronnie, under 90% for Judd. The chance for Ronnie here. In it goes. Played at such a pace. Bound to be on the ball. Tell him. A little bit closer oh. to this red would have been ideal, but he's still on it. I think the potting angle he's got on the red, he'd probably have to play it for the blue. I can't see... Well, there's a couple of open reds, but not easy to get on. Five. Well, Stephen, into the pink. I oh, just missed the pink on the left-hand side. There's a few loose reds there, isn't there? Yeah, I think I think he'll play the pink. It's a very exact shot going into the red. Yeah, played into the pink. Didn't get full in the face, so you're trusting the luck a little bit because the, the cue ball's running a bit loose. Ten. Yeah, he's, he's smiling, mm. shaking his head, but he knows he didn't play the shot as well as he might have. Yeah, you see, hits the pink half ball. And you see the cue ball's running off two cushions. You catch the pink full in the face, the cue ball stays in the middle of the table. So it, it wasn't played well, the shot. A little bit tentatively, actually. I don't think he fully committed to it. Bring yourself in 10. For let off for Judd Trump, though, he's been fearing the worst. I've seen Ronnie make that magnificent century in the previous frame and then letting him in so soon the next frame. <laughs> Last 
thing before the mid-session interlude. Jeff Trump badly wants it. The length of cue ball. The red on the left-hand side of the table is the one that Ronnie's got to avoid at all costs if he's going to try and get back to Bork. Down that side. Don't see a safety shot down the right-hand side. Got to catch this just right. Got to miss that red on the left-hand cushion. He did do, but in so intent on not making that mistake, he underhit the cue ball. Now, Judd had a close look at the two reds to the left of the pink to see if there were anywhere near a plant. I don't think they're anywhere near. Now you can see it there. Well, let's be fair, Stephen. <laughs> if they are, well, Ronnie misses a trick because he was looking down at these reds. He didn't think it was a plant. Well, it depends how close they are together. I mean, you can see quite clearly on the right-hand job, but if they're touching, if you hit the first one on the left-hand side, it pushes the second one to the right, so he's thinking, maybe I could make it. Risky. But he made it. The reverse plant. Yeah, well picked out. Well worked out. Shouldn't be a problem getting on the red. It's closest to the right corner. Can go either way between yellow and brown or green and brown. Mm, he's playing for the, the red to left corner. Six. I always say play for the one in the right corner because I'm not sure if the black goes to the right corner pocket. Well, it does because otherwise you you wouldn't play for this red. So, good chance this for Judd Trump, and a frame he badly needs. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. Well, it's a little bit closer to the cushion with the cue ball than he would like. I'm not sure it was a plant, the two reds above the black to right corner. Otherwise I'll have to play some sort of Cannon, but well, I always say missing blacks off a spot at this level is unforgivable. Yeah, Stephen said he should have been further away from the cushion. And he's just trying to pinch a little bit. And you can't pinch on these pockets, simple as. And what a gift now for Ronnie O'Sullivan. One. Just nudging Eight. the reds open. Knew it wasn't going to get a good angle on this red, but up for the blue. Nine. 
just about got there. The right angle, that is. Just. Fourteen. Fifteen. Once again, this is so unlike Ronnie, he's usually so accurate getting the right side of the blue. That's what we always commend him on, but that's twice now. He's not got the right angle. Trying to use the knuckle of the middle pocket, very cleverly done. But it'd only be good, this red, if he could play for the black. No, you have to go back for the blue. Well, they say if you're going to be wrong side of the blue, be well the wrong side. So we get in and out of bolt now. All about line and length. Worrying times for Judd Trump. It's four frames behind at 5 1. And, well, facing the distinct possibility he's going to go back to four frames behind after doing well to get himself back into this final. He's let that momentum slip. It's not that he hasn't had chances. 32. That's the worst thing as a snooker player. You don't mind 30. if you don't like it, but you don't mind if you've never had a chance. Your opponent's just clearing the table every time. But when you've had chances and missed, it just makes that seat all the more uncomfortable. 30. Yeah, as I was saying before, there's a three ways to get in, and Ronnie. 30. As uh, last two frames, oh, hasn't had to do anything really. Judd's had the chance. I missed a black along the cushion, tricky, yes. But the one off the spot, you miss when you're in close, that's danger. And there's his pot success, 85%. Needs to be higher than that. So, 43 points the lead, this red to go 44 points in front with just 43 remaining. 49. Yeah. He's still to be put under any real pressure 56. in this World Championship, Ronnie Sullivan. But that's easier said than 57. done when he's playing as well as he is. Very, very intimidating to play. Sixty four, sixty five, seventy, seventy two. Seventy nine, eighty four, ninety. Right, seven, please. Mistake from Jeff Trump being punished now. 
to 34. And Judd going to the mid-session interval has a lot to think about. He now trails by eight frames to four. Yeah, Ronnie won his first world title in 2001 and 21 years later. Uh, the engines are very definitely turning in his quest for a seventh. And Judd looking rather forlorn now out there, John. Ominous. Unfortunately, ominous. He's not making the most of the opportunities he's been given. Admittedly, he's under cost. He had a couple of horrible little shots, but the last frame there, not great. And uh, you can sense that Ronnie knows what's going on mm. and he's ready to pounce on every opportunity. How difficult is it not to berate yourself when you're out there? All of this attention magnifying your mistakes, Sean? It's the, most hard, it's the hardest part about being a snooker player because unlike golf, we don't have a caddy, you don't have a corner man, you don't have a teammate to rely on. You're out there on your own and those demons, those voices in your head when you're sat there in the chair, you, you know, if they're positive, great. If they're not, it's hard work. And, you know, Judd now, the people around him, the people who are in his dressing room, they're going to earn their money now. It, this is the time for some good advice and we'll see what happens in the, after the resumption. We will because the gap is five, but it's been absolutely wonderful here over the last three weeks. In fact, we've had history in the making and the breaking. We've had new stars emerging and we've had the return of a familiar group of 40-somethings who just refuse to be beaten. It's been entertainment to the max. Although Snooker's showpiece in Sheffield began on a sunny April Saturday in 2022, I want to take you back 50 years. It was the decade when the sport's holy trinity of Higgins, Williams and O'Sullivan and their favourite playground came into the world. And much of the activity at the Crucible this year had its foundations in the days of tank tops, flared trousers and unusual hairdos. The city's theatre goers first came through the doors of their new playhouse just over half a century ago and for all but five of the years since, they've arrived to watch globe-shaped objects dance to the tune of the heroes of the Green Bays. But before this year's championship had even caught light, there were those who suggested the unthinkable, that it could be curtains for the current arrangement. Would I like a new crucible built in Sheffield by Sheffield City Council that holds 2,000 people instead of 900? Absolutely. But without that, I'm not leaving Sheffield because the history of the Crucible, the history of World Championship Snooker, lies here, and you don't play games with history. It was also the golden anniversary of the first qualifier winning the big prize, and the non-seeded players again came to try and book a place on the main stage. This year, qualifying was notable for 2006 champion Graham Dots 147. And because history was made with the inclusion of the first Iranian player, Hossein Vafai. Prior to the tournament, the Persian Prince Vafai had dared to suggest that it was time for the game's talisman and world number one Ronnie O'Sullivan to hang up his cue. But the rocket remains the most sought after signature at the stage door, and this year arrived hoping to have his name etched on the trophy for a record equaling seventh time. Despite falling 3 0 down to Dave Gilbert in round one, Ronnie played the leading man with his usual panache. Can you get it safe? Can you pot it? Can you pot it? Unbelievable! After keeping Gilbert in his chair for long periods, the Rocket talked face furniture with Rob Walker. These are actually headphones, so I, I, I could actually take some phone calls, listen to my music now. You need to get a set of these, Rob. Ronnie had suggested there would be carnage for the seeds after the draw, but the first round didn't quite deliver the predicted mayhem. All aboard for Night Train! Mark Selby had got us underway. Isn't it great to be back here at the Crucible Theatre? The defending champion stood firm and became the first player through to the last 16. While Mark Williams looked imperious as he romped past Welsh compatriot Michael White. Oh my goodness me. The first round's biggest surprise came when ninth seed Barry Hawkins was downed by the interestingly coiffured action Jackson Page, who sat 81 places beneath the Hawk in the world's pecking order. Action finished with a tribute act to his mate and mentor Williams, who he would face in round two. It's not like a friend, it's more like a son, you know, and it's going to be difficult for me, but I don't like losing to anybody, but if I am going to lose to anyone here, then it would be him, no question. Other first round highlights included Anthony McGill being spooked by the PA system. 
and Stephen Maguire and Sean Murphy play in an epic 14th frame, described by Ken Doherty as crazy. I have never seen a frame like it. And after the balls had played mischief, it was qualifier Maguire who eventually prevailed. Naughty schoolboys Mark Allen and Scott Donaldson were caught giggling before the pistol sent Donaldson packing. As for the Persian prince, he had the rug pulled from under his feet by Judd Trump. We can also thank the 1970s for the annual music montage. Snooker just wouldn't be snooker without it. Go on then, but more like this. Oh. Oh, aye, aye. Nobody's hurt. in the black. Come on now. Oh. oh dear. So hello, where's the balls gone? Foul. There's me like still in one piece. The only non-seeded player to progress to the last eight was on fire Stephen Maguire. He dashed to Glasgow to pick up a replacement cue before returning and using it to good effect against the highly rated Zhao Zingtong. In match 18, teacher Williams gave pupil Page a 13-3 caning as the thrice-time champion racked up 10 tons in his first two matches. Look at that. There is absolutely nothing safe on that snooker table. Another of the class of 92 passing all his exams was John Higgins, who saw off the challenge of Nop on Sign Camp on day 10. 25. Very, very nice. There must have been something in the stars on Monday the 25th. Nop on. <laughs> Kyron Wilson. Oh, he's overcut it. <laughs> and Stuart Bingham all made valiant attempts at a maximum clearance during the afternoon. Bingham at least had the satisfaction of victory over Wilson. These near misses proved to be mere appetizers for the main course that followed that evening. The first and second round saw a record number of century breaks made as the standard of the modern game continues to soar. Well, now everybody's heard about the bird, about the bird. Those paying attention would have noticed the size of winged interlopers had been increasing all week. By Friday, snooker had flown from the back pages to the front. There is a pigeon in the Crucible Theatre. It startled poor Mark Selby, who was returning from a comfort break, then eyeballed the commentators, begging the question, where was Barry the Hawk Hawkins when you needed him? The BBC sent an ornithological expert to investigate. <laughs> After his running with the bird, Selby was less bothered by the spider in frame 18 of his match with Yambing Tao. Well, that was absolutely wonderful. The penultimate frame lasted 85 minutes. It's nice to, to be feeling sort of better and more positive as the tournament goes on. The pair had been behind the curtain when the highlight of the evening took place, 
but whose mysterious hand were they shaking? Why, it was Neil Robertson's, of course. Robbo had become only the eighth man to pot 15 red and 15 black, plus all the colours at the crucible. For the 12th ever maximum break at the Crucible Theatre, this black. I think to make a 147 when it really, really matters, um, you know, in the heat of battle, it was, it was, a, it was a fantastic moment for me. Um, the crowd was incredible, and then, you know, having my mum up there as well was, was, was great. But it was his challenger, Jack Lizowski, who answered any questions about his bottle. Gotcha! As he remained nerveless to win the decidedly tense decider. Just an incredible game, you know, it had the, the decider, had maximum, um, had centuries, had some great long pots, and yeah, we're just waffling now. <laughs> Finally, O'Sullivan hit exactly 100 to finish off Mark Allen. In doing so, the Rocket had won his 71st match at the Crucible and secured his passage through to a 20th quarter final, both of which eclipsed previous records. Anyway, let's laugh at the players going through the ringer for another year. Williams and Jan auditioned for Strictly in the first session of their quarter-final. Before a voice in the crowd reminded them that a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Come on, Jan, I need a wee. So do I. <laughs> Williams sympathised and kept the audience cross-legged while he sorted himself out. On his return, Mark hit a 1-3-5 and then took three frames on the spin. Unbelievable shot. To become the oldest semi-finalist since Ray Reardon in 1985. Judd Trump was a right card in the 15th frame of his match with Stuart Bingham, showing impudence in spades as he pranked poor referee Ben Williams. <laughs> Ball run Bingham had beaten Trump en route to winning the title in 2015, but eight consecutive frames, <laughs> including an outrageous fluke, gave the ace a place in the last four. Never in doubt. On the other side of the draw, Lazowski played a second decider in three days, this time against his idol, John Higgins. It was a frame too far for Jack, who made a mess of a straightforward red. Oh, no. Jack Lazowski. Allowing Higgins to clear it up and show why he's considered so good at the double. What a shot. 72. Ronnie O'Sullivan hadn't been beaten by Stephen Maguire for 10 years. That run never looked like ending, despite on fire getting all his ducks in a row. But those with tickets for the final session saw only 20 minutes of action after Ronnie had pulled out pots like only he can as he homed in on a record 13th semi-final. What a pot! So for the first time at the Crucible, all four semi-finalists were former winners. They also had an average age of 43, as our three children of the 70s swept aside their youthful opponents.
Mark Williams faced Judd Trump for the first time in a Triple Crown event and it produced a match for the ages. Judd head into an 11-4 lead. Wow, he can pot, can't he? But Williams made a sensational recovery in the third session and closed Trump's lead to just two. What a shot! When they returned on Saturday night, Williams won the 31st frame, which left him on the brink of one of the Crucible's greatest comebacks. But it went to a decider, and a pair of cross doubles from Trump helped him finally stumble over the finish line. It's a roll up to the corner. It looks good. It looks very good. It's in. And Mark Williams comes forward. These two players have given us one of the best semi-finals ever seen in the history of the World Championship here at the Crucible Theatre. An impossible act to follow, but Ronnie O'Sullivan's match with John Higgins provided the most dramatic of frames. In the 16th, O'Sullivan's clearance of 43 tied the scores and forced the black to be respotted. Ronnie then sunk it to snatch the frame. It's there. Ronnie O'Sullivan has done almost the impossible in this frame. Higgins never really recovered, and the following day, his frustration began to show. Ronnie ran out the victor 17-11, making him the oldest finalist for 40 years. As Ronnie and Judd sip their tea in the break, they may suspect that whoever prevails will be the answer to a future pub quiz question, who won the world title in the year of the pigeon? <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, Abigail Davis. A fantastic member of our team this year. We've really enjoyed her work. Favourite moment of the championship, Sean Murphy. Well, you know, obviously the pigeon. <laughs> Obviously, but I think after that, you know, I really enjoyed the class and the manners and the just the j tradition that Nopon Sankam brought to it. That with the great story of his daughter being born back home in Thailand, playing here for her honour, um, and you know, no one would have a bad word to say about Nopon, a real gentleman. And she's named Believe. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that lovely? Yeah, wonderful. That for you, John? Um, three things. I think Neil Robertson's maximum, obviously. Very special to see him be so animated when he made it, because he's had a brilliant season. The way Mark Williams played and conducted himself yeah. with the tone was an absolute treat. But I hope he's listening to me, because a very big penny dropped in this championship. I'm expecting big things from Mr Lazowski. He turned into an all-round proper match player. Watch out. Alazowski is about. Yes, speaking of whom, Jack is with Steve Davis in the practice room. Praise indeed, Jack. Um, I guess some of your exploits, particularly against Neil Robertson, would be your favourite moment of the championship. Yeah, to see Neil sort of make the maximum against me and then, you know, he's sort of brought that standard and then to, to manage to, to win, win that game was um, the most sort of special evening in the snooker ever for me. But, um, Just that straightforward red. Yeah, this obviously straightforward this, it was red. so straightforward against John, otherwise I could still be in the tournament. It, but, um, it was hardly that, was it? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah. a little bit tricky. Come on, yeah, yeah. Have, have a go, give me a chance. That was marvellous. I think the Mark Williams match against Judd Trump was incredible. And also other things as well. I mean, the, the excitement in the room, all the flukes that Mark got towards the end there, everything was happening, Judd Trump's cross doubles. But even so, shows you how important and how much frustration and emotion out there. John Higgins banging the queue. Even that. So much excitement during the tournament. It's been great to be involved in it. And it's great to be working with Jack as well. Great, great, great lad and great player. And we are expecting great things of him as well. Yes, here, here, we certainly are. Uh, next year, Jack. Um, for me, I'm with Steve on this one. I think the first couple of sessions in that Higgins O'Sullivan final is the most intense, prickly atmosphere I have ever experienced in the Crucible. It was cut it with a knife territory, it really was. But if you like big hitters, check this out. I've lost count of how many times I've been arrested. I've been to be held back. Just because you get knocked down doesn't mean you've got to stay down. Giving up is not an option. Give me 100% and I'll give you 100%. It's all or not. Sometimes the greatest fight is with yourself. Idris Elba's fight score. Press red for all episodes on BBC iPlayer.
Yeah, back on BBC Two at nine o'clock next Sunday. All episodes currently available now on the iPlayer. But it's Ronnie who's landing the bigger punches so far in this final. There they are waiting backstage to come out. They've got five more frames to play. And the gap is now four. It's O'Sullivan in his quest for seven world titles. Is 8-4 in front. Five more to play this evening. And we'll return you to Stephen and to John. Thank you, Hazel. Five more frames to play in this session. And you just feel that Judd Trump needs to win this mini session any which way he can. Thank you. Thank you. Frame 13. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Yeah, decent length with the break off. Yeah, Judd Trump's pot success still only 85%. I'm afraid that's not going to get the job done against someone playing as well as Ronnie O'Sullivan. So he's got to have to do something. He's going to have to raise his game somehow. Find a bit of inspiration from somewhere. I think the way he's playing at the moment is, to a certain extent, playing into Ronnie's hands. I mean, I would say be a more aggressive, be more attacking in your shot choice. It's easier said than done. I don't mean just go for absolutely everything, but he's turned down a couple tonight that a little bit surprising. A little bit careless. I think it was a half hearted attempt to the double from Ronnie, but I think this red cuts to the left middle. Missed it completely. Amazing. Thank you. Quiet down now. Thank you. So demoralising. Going back to your chair. Eight four behind, and in the very next frame, you have a gift of an opening to your opponent. Although, One. Ronnie Asselin will be disgusted at that cue ball. <clears throat> controlled the cannon. Very well, Eight. And that, as you see, thin pot to the corner pocket on the black. But these shots are obviously become a lot easier. Eight four ahead than eight four behind. Nine. Looking for an angle on this black. I don't think he's got one, but there is one loose red. He may be able to get on. Just got a slight angle, but not one to go in the cluster. Six. Could have done with this cue ball coming away from the cushion. Seven. That's a nice little kiss on that red. Now a few shots to play here, but he looks to have a good angle on the green to come off the side, cushion into the cluster. If he plays the brown, he's just playing for the one red. Well, he felt the brown give him a perfect chance to play on this red, but 
you'll be looking for a similar angle on the green or yellow this time around. Twenty-two Might be able to come off the brown side cushion, crash into the pack. Didn't catch him fully enough. Yeah, I don't think 26. it was an optimum angle on the brown. You see, it didn't generate a lot of pace on the cue ball. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 26. To it and fall on, he's got the double kiss. Mm, worrying signs for Judd, no doubt. Is there a red goal to the left middle? Doesn't look like, so it's a thin cut to this left corner. Could have had something easier. When you've got a difficult pot, you give the pot due care and attention, not guaranteed position. shot was the, the body language as he went back to his seat. Almost an air of resignation. Not really anger with playing a bad shot. Five. Yeah, one of the great things about Ronnie O'Sullivan is cue ball control, but this visit and his last visit, he's not got control of the cue ball at all. Can't believe that was the red he played for. Last shot. Royal Sullivan, five. <coughs> yeah, that was a... You know, it's it's a lonely place out there. And at the moment, it's Ronnie O'Sullivan who's, if you like, dominating. He's the one producing the snooker and just playing catch up. But he also wants to be on that table performing. And in the last couple of frames, when he's got in amongst the balls, he's not. safe. Ronnie's got well one definite red that's on the pink spot, but this red he's looking at, if it's on to the left middle pocket, I think he can play for the black. Never easy, particularly at that pace.
I mean, if you can get past the brown here to this friend on the left-hand side of the table, you can't. He's going to play a swerve. This is the easiest way to get back to Bok. Problem is with the swerve, don't do it too much and hit it too thick. <laughs> Judge to perfection. I think this red in the middle of the table will go to the right corner. And the one just below the pink will cut to the right corner. That's his choice. Good cue ball. But it was maybe not a half chance, but a chance. These players pot so proficiently. Looks a straightforward safety from Ronnie. The only thing that would put him off it, knocking the red on the left-hand side cushion, is he's got a 35-point lead, which he might feel it's worth protecting. Another excellent safety. And that's the problem for Judd, isn't it, Stephen? I don't think he's going to outdo Ronnie on the safety, so when he gets these long pots, he's got to start knocking them in. I, otherwise, I can't see how he's going to create chances. He can compete at the safety side of the game. I, mean, I remember when he won the world title against John Higgins, he was, every part of the game, he was virtually unplayable. I just think, pure and simply, he's not playing well enough. You know, you look at his tournament pot success at 88%. It's, it's not Judd, Judd Trump-like form. As I've been used to the last three or four years, winning all these titles. And if you're bringing that kind of game to the World Championship final against someone who's, well, at the top of their form, well, to be brutally honest, there's only going to be one winner. Unless he can up it, and very quickly. I don't think Ronnie can get through to this red. Two from the left, the yellow just in the way. Maybe he could bend it with a little tracer left-hand side. No. So just playing the containing safety. You just get that feeling at the moment as well. There's not a lot of pressure on Ronnie coming from anywhere, is there? You know, and the safety and he's in a comfort zone. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> he pretty much has been this whole championship, to be fair. 3-0 down against David Gilbert then. Ended up being 6-3 up after the first session. Mark Allen, he only needed a frame or two to win in the final session. Maguire only needed a frame or two. John Higgins, he needed two frames in the final session to win. It's been very comfortable. <coughs> but you have to say that in Maine, that's due to how well he's played. We just had a look behind this pocket. There's a red along the cushion which could possibly be potted. There you see it. And I think the black goes in the opposite corner without having to do a lot. Well, we decided to stun it and made the pot more difficult as he left Ronnie a chance. He may have. I'll tell you what, he hit that well. It was only the pace, I think, that kept it out. Yeah, dead weight, that was in. But that's the sort of half chances he's going to have to try and make the most of to get back into this match.
Well, the Reds are in the open. Judd, 35 points behind. You can't make another mistake this frame. If Ronnie pots the next red, you think he's certain to go on to win the frame. Judd needs the next opening. Well, once again, the long pot. Where's the red ball going? Oh! Well, that was his only hole. How far away was he with that? Thank you. I'll settle down now. Well, his, his game's in tatters at the moment, you have to say. What? There was a boxing match. You can see he was on the ropes. As I said, Six. Ronnie was a 35-point lead when he came to the table. All the reds he needs in the open. Won't be bothered about playing for the black Seven. anytime soon. Thirteen. Fourteen. Twenty. Two reds, two colours to secure the frame. Twenty-one. So there you see it. And this red will put him sixty-three points in front with just fifty-nine remaining. So 69 now, 59 remaining. 34. No way back to the table for Judd. 35. Yeah, what a comfortable night <clears throat> for Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs> 41. 42. And Judd sat in his seat, Ronnie O'Sullivan stealing the show, literally. Doesn't matter about the black, he'll stay in his seat. It's easy for Ronnie O'Sullivan at the moment. Judd Trump is going to dig deep and produce something. 9-4. Well, game in tatters, says the commentary team. And uh, how would you assess the mountain that Judd Trump is now facing, Sean? Yeah, do you know, it's not even the score that's the problem here for Judd. It's the fact that those shots that have become his trademark over the last few seasons, where he's won five, six ranking events and more, you know, those long reds that he rakes in from nowhere, uh, they're not going in. Yeah. And they're not going near the pocket. And that's down to, we've, we don't want to labour the point, um, but he does have that very unique technique where he addresses the ball in the different position than he strikes. Mm. He aims to miss, and if that doesn't coordinate, doesn't self-correct, he could hit the wrong side of the ball. And he's, and he's on record himself as saying that because of that cue action, it's harder for him to, to be consistent through every session, and that really is the failing of his game at the moment. I mean, he's quite open about it. It's also very difficult to teach because it's not like someone you can go and take into the snooker room and go, right, let's have a look at you, let's see if you're lined up in the middle, because he's never lined up in the middle. He's got his own particular time, and so it's difficult to teach. In some ways, the best thing his father did was leave him alone, mm. because he's developed his own way of playing. But in other ways, it's bad, because when it goes wrong, boy, does it go wrong. Mm. I mean, the Reddy's played in the corner there, 
I mean, it's it. I have a look at this. I mean, this doesn't even threaten the Joes. I mean, that's that's as far as any professional snooker player this week has missed a pot in the corner pocket, and that is somebody with bereft of confidence mm. in the long game. But the irony was, three years ago in 2019, that cue action was in full force, and th some of the shots he was producing were extraordinary, so it does sort of emphasise the inconsistency that this can create with him. Yeah, that's the natural talent element of it. That's the yeah. bit you can't teach. When it, when it, when it self-corrects, when he strikes that cue ball where he means to, he'll put all the balls, you know, in a very, very entertaining way. But when he doesn't, when it doesn't self-correct, he could miss anything. OK, Thank back we go here, 14, and this Judd match Trump is getting Trump. away from Judd Trump. Ronnie very much in the ascendancy. Yes, couldn't agree more, Hazel. But what do you do? Do you say, right, well, I'm going to let my arm go. I'm going to go for these long pots. Even if you've got no confidence you're going to get them, can you somehow knock a few in that will give you that confidence to pursue that attacking style of game, which is... Judd Trump was famous for. <coughs> what a wonderful safety shot from Ronnie, and that's what you're up against. This and three more frames to be played. Well, a nice return. I'm sorry, Stephen, but I'm, I'm just going to say nice return. But you left a pot on, all right, it might not be tempted. Tight under the ball cushion. Yeah, I was going to say, 8-5 down to Stuart Bingham. His game was in a similar state, but he managed to find something when it was needed. Well, the same applies here. Far on the miss. Just run full. Yeah, but I think in that match he got a bit of help from Stuart, didn't he? And you can't rely on your opponent helping you. You've got to make some of your own running. This red cuts. Well, at least he's potted a ball. One. I always think if you're really struggling, if you can play three decent shots in a row that can get you back into some sort of a rhythm. At the moment, Judd's fallen one bad shot with another. He's potted the red. Bravo. He's taken this brown on. Automatic position, should he get it? But he didn't. In fact, that's the automatic position. I thought he was going to just drop it dead weight in, but... He's actually not left anything, I don't think. This red to the left corner is, well, it's not the sort of shot Ronnie's been taking on. It's fraught with danger, but as I say, when you're 9-4 ahead, the pressure's not as intense. The cue ball's going to be careering through the reds. Trusting to luck a little bit where the cue ball's going to end up. Well, he's playing it with screw. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really play with right hand side, but when the cue ball hit the cushion, it, that right hand side just took it to the top cushion. You can still pop this black, but trickier than he would have liked. No, no. <laughs> well, we said needs a bit of help from his opponent. Now, Judd, big chance. I know there's lots of pressure, but you've got to make the most of these opportunities now. One. All he needs to do here is miss the blue you know, twice across the table. He'll have a choice of reds, one to right middle or one to right corner. Two cushions, a bit of top spin. Say just inside the blue. Thought he 
They might just put a little dab of right hand side oh. on there, but at the moment he's probably just concentrating a hundred percent and making sure he pops the ball. As I say, if he's got three or four shots in a row here, that will get him back into some sort of a rhythm. Five. Well, he's finished upon the pink. The only problem is that black is just blocking so many reds from going into that pocket. Yeah, you've got to play it. You've got to clear that pocket. That's okay. 12. Didn't really hit that with a lot of authority. As I say, at the moment, he's concentrating so hard on making sure he pops the ball that the positional side is going slightly astray. 20. That was a decent shot, though. Red below the pink, pops the right corner. But again, it wasn't the most positive strike. It was a little bit tentative. Yeah, he knew he was running through other reds and caught the second red full, which took all the pace out of the cue ball. Decision time now. Big decision. Tough pot on the black. Pink's available into to far left, left middle. But not easy. Trump, 21. Thank you. Sure. Just looking at the tables, we look at Jordan. Just trying to get some inspiration from somewhere. You normally get it when you get to the table, but he's got no good thoughts of what's been happening in the last few frames. And if Ronnie knocks this in and gets position on the colour, he's in danger of losing this one. A little bit of a heavy contact there. You saw the red leave the bed of the table to call the pace out the cue ball. But with the brown not being on its spot, it's an easy in and out of balk. He's not on anything. He's not going to be on anything. Six. Just overhit it. And I don't know whether, Stephen, and I, and I know Ronnie's experience, but the last few visits, his cue ball hasn't been great. Yeah, I, I think sometimes if he's, I mean, he's getting it so Ronnie easy at the moment. Six. His opponents, as they say, his, his, his game is gone at the minute. Sometimes you can just take your foot off the gas mentally. Your focus can just slip. Yeah. And his, maybe his concentration's not got that intensity that it had a couple of frames ago. Anyway, Judd. Tight under the ball cushion. With a big problem here to get this safe. I think he can get to the red that's to the right of the four, the one closest to the black. And it goes to the left corner pocket, and it's one of these situations where I think the safety shot is just as difficult as the pot. Yeah, it's coming. See the pot and angle now of this red. 
I mean, it's probably going to cost them the frame should he miss, but I'd much rather be playing a tough pot than a tougher safety. Mm, close. Once again. Quite down now, please. Close isn't good enough. Knew it was fraught with danger. It's not left for only the easiest of starters. Just a bit of noise there in the arena, so Ronnie getting up. This is a big shot. If he can pot this red, doesn't have to do much to be positioned on the brown. Well, for the black even. Right, right through the heart to the pocket, a wonderful strike. <laughs> yeah, the great view of the Ronnie O'Sullivan technique there. Nothing moving on the strike. Eight. No head movement, no deviation of the cue going through the cue ball. Nine. So that black now just puts him three points behind. Sixteen. These six reds, more than enough to win the frame before we get 17. to the colours. But it will require precise positional play. But this is where he excels and master at this type of situation. And that was beautifully struck. Deep Thank screw, left-hand side. Couldn't have played it better. 25. I don't think quite got the angle there to... Uh, well, he may be able to play for the black, can he? Decided he could because he was guaranteed a good angle. Now, this is the stock shot of Ronnie O'Sullivan. He plays this better than anyone I've ever seen. It's done off the top cushion, side cushion, for reds in the same pocket as the black. Well, he just used the one cushion it needs to run. Just got there. 48. 29 in front. Red, black would have been enough, but he can't get on the black. So if he plays for the blue, he'll need the last red. <laughs> Look at the total points. I mean, it's getting on for 500 different. Just not happy, just a little bit of tip, just flaking a bit so you get a little bit of smooth sandpaper and just take that off. It's just off putting, it's in your eye line when you look down the shot. So even at this stage and with this big lead, taking nothing for granted. Forty-nine. Mm -hmm. Could have been better on this blue. Glance at the scoreboard. This blue will put him 35 points in front, but there'll be 35 remaining. Well, this looks a good line. 
This looks a good line. 54. Cue ball control, absolute best. Another glance at the scoreboard. Just the red needed. Yeah, he's in a lovely place at the moment, is Ronnie Sullivan. I know, I've been there. You've got your opponent who's, you have to say, he's gone at the moment. And you can just get to the table, everything's easy. Under no pressure whatsoever. 62. He can virtually win this final tonight. The way that's going at the moment, Judd has to improve just to win a frame. 65. Yeah, playing Ronnie or Sullivan at any time is a daunting proposition, but when you've not brought 69. your best game... Boy. How do you work out? How do you 74. get a frame on the board? That's what Jim Trump will be thinking now. Mr. Ronnie O'Sullivan's got at the moment, no doubt. And, and he just seven. goes further and further in front. Six clear, 10-4. Well, not great times for Judd. It's getting tough, isn't it, Jack? Yeah, it's, you know, Ronnie's hitting form. Judd's missing a few by yeah. a bit of a way. The problem, picking up on what uh, uh, Sean John was saying in the studio, so, Ronnie O'Sullivan, when he pulls the cue back, it's dead on line. We've had a couple of shots. He pulls it back on the line, goes through on the line. Jack's got a different action. It's great when it's working, but it's tough when it's not. So, Jack, when he pulls the cue back, you think he just like, pulls it back and then he moves his body? Just yeah, it's at the last way. minute. At the yeah. last minute he goes... So, he pulls it back and then he moves to the, that side. Yeah. So, what he has to do, he has to start on the right-hand side because as he pulls it back and then he goes through... It moves and he tries to catch it in the middle. It's such a tough way to do it. Mm. And it seems like it's becoming more pronounced. So, I mean, have you ever spoken to him about it? I know he's tried to sort of address it before, but um, he couldn't really play. It's just something he's done all his career. And yeah, maybe it is getting a bit more pronounced now, but at least he sort of does it consistently. I think even if you aim the, in perfectly aligned, you know, if you don't sort of hit the ball consistently, it could go anywhere. But, you know, he's got a, it looks bad, but it's, he does it so consistently, it sort of works. Yeah, well, he's been winning loads of tournaments, but when it goes wrong, it does seem to be a problem. Maybe he has to try and keep his head as still as possible, but it's so tough when you've got a habit like that. Extremely difficult to change in the middle of a World Championship final as well, guys. Yeah, and he looks a little jaded, I have to say. He was sitting in his chair, giving off slightly the wrong signals if Ronnie had seen them, to be honest with you. But he's just somehow got to try and win a couple of frames here. Frame 15. Yeah, it's 10-4, but is it over We're and out for Judd Trump? Frame 15 underway. Another decent safety shot from Ronnie. Left a red on the left hand side of the table, but I don't think he can get through to the potting angle.
Or at least being close to the pot, you found the path back to the balk end. Another delightful safety there from Ronnie. He plays those shots so well. Lumi on these super fine cloths, playing with a, any kind of side spin. It can go wrong, but he's just wonderful at playing that shot. Played a lot of left hand side, so when he came off the second cushion, it just checked, took the pace out of the cue ball, and found the gap to the ball cushion. Now, can Judd find a reply? Needs to miss the Brown. Good shot. Good reply. There's a safety success. Well, Ronnie, just a couple of percent ahead of Judd in that department. This time, just a little bit short of pace. But that green makes it awkward. Might just be able to cue past it to play the safety. No, slightly hampered. And all things considered, played it well. Yeah, that's one of the best shots he's played for a while, actually. It's very much easier said than done when you're playing as badly as Judd is and you're low in confidence, but somehow you've got to just tell yourself that this is the final of the World Championship. You've got to find something from somewhere. That's a misjudgment. This red is possible to the right corner. I know it's tricky, always are when you close to the object ball. I mean, nothing's going to look easy to Judd at the moment. never unlucky to going off, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt there. At such an acute angle and such a tricky pot, he put all his attention into the pot. Just is it slightly too thin, and that's why he found the middle pocket. And isn't it always the way? When you need a bit of luck, you never get it. No, and I think it's fair to say the vast majority of this crowd are looking for a Ronnie Sullivan win, but I think they want to see a match as well, don't they, JV? Yeah, absolutely. There they are. I was, went over to the Crucible cards tonight. People in here from Switzerland, Brazil, Belgium, Holland. Well, running more or less forced into that. So here's another chance for Judd. And you couldn't wish for a better one than this. Black available into both corners. Got to score here. One. Yeah, if there was one part of Ronnie's game, you'd say he's a little bit behind the rest, is maybe he's long potting. 
sixty percent. But yeah, you're absolutely right, John. Eight. It's almost like it's not quite a last chance saloon yet, but badly needs to win at least two of these last three frames. Nine. And that was a nice shot. Didn't look much, but when you're struggling as he is, that was a perfectly played positional shot. Fourteen. Fifteen. There's been a few kicks in this final. But these two players are the only two players I think that I know of on tour that use the old traditional chalk, which, as a general opinion, causes kicks. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. So far, so good. Every pot going right in the heart Third. of the pocket. I think if he gets an angle on the black here, unless a, a red below the pink is an easy pot, it doesn't look like it. I'd be tempted to go into the, the bunch here. He's not got the angle this time. So he's going to have to play for the red along the cushion here. No, he's not. He's played up. But another red, maybe the fact he missed that black early on. 38. Let's put him off playing that red. Might be looking for an angle here to try and open 39. up these five reds and pink. It's not easy from the blue. He's coming back to look at this red to the right middle. Yeah, the one immediately below the pink. Right. Goes to the right middle, as you can see, it won't go to this corner pocket. Precise positional shot required if he's playing for it. Thought that going into the pink was a better option. How's your luck? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, that shot making feel good. Couldn't have this any better. Pink full in the face. Needs a bit of inspiration 45. from somewhere, and that shot may have given it to Judd Trump. Yes, yeah, so I said before, it's been the Ronnie O'Sullivan show. Fifty-one. A century. Just to let the crowd know, obviously, you know he's a great player, but he just wants to show it to him this evening. And that will help him to relax, you would hope. So every shot here is so important. Well, he's, he's OK. Didn't want the kiss on the red, but he's landed on the pink nicely. Yeah, and if he's also looking for a bit of motivation, as I, as I said, the, the majority of the crowd want a Ronnie O'Sullivan win. Again, I know how he feels, probably playing Jimmy eights. White in so many finals. Sometimes you can use that as a bit of motivation. 59. He needs something to get him going in this match. So 62 points to the lead. 
66. Looks at the scoreboard. This red will put him 63 ahead, with just 59 remaining. So Ronnie O'Sullivan needs a snooker, but I think it's important here. If Judd can make a century, I think it'd be really important for his confidence. I think the fact he's won this frame in one visit 73. will help him a lot. A little puff of the cheeks there. Oh, fabulous pot. Okay, we're going to George, but that's more like the Judd Trump that we know. Oh, unlucky with the cannon. Yeah, I, I take your point, Stephen. And the fact that he's not missed an easy ball. Easy. I mean, you can run out of position. Anybody can do that. So he's done what he had to do, and every credit. Because it's not easy when your opponent's dominating the table. But that was a good contribution from Judd. Still behind, but that might just give him a bit of confidence to push on. Five behind. Well, under the circumstances, what character? Judd Trump's shown there. Absolutely brilliant because he was given the chance there by Ronnie but had the gumption and the nerve to take it more to the point. Yeah, that was very classy. You know, technique issues aside and all that, what we were talking, you can't beat someone's heart. You can't teach that, the courage uh, and the conviction to take a chance like that on a night like tonight, mm. do it when it matters. That was very impressive. Because, John, in that earlier frame, we saw him with the head in the hand, and you, mm. and you said that that's the wrong signal to be sending out. Mm. But he did look very, very down in the dumps there. Yeah. And I was chatting to you guys in here saying, don't forget, he had a peak performance yesterday. He said that the win over Mark Williams in the semi-final was the best he's ever had. Mm. And I just wondered how much it would take out of you in a moment like, like today. I mean, it is very draining, there's no doubt about it. That semi-final is arguably as hard as the final. It's over three days, not two. Uh, and the emotional highs and lows of winning it, or losing it, uh, really take it out of you. And who knows how he's feeling? Only he could tell us. These are a couple of big frames coming up. I mean, if he gets out of this session 10-7, Hazel, with the way he's felt this evening and how he's been second best, It'll be a monumental result, I'll tell you what, and it'll be a long way from the finish of the final. Yep, I should remind everybody that in one of his earlier matches, he was 5-8 down to uh, Stuart Bingham in the quarter-final. Won eight in a row. Can be done. Thank you, frame 16. Judge Trump to break. Not found the ball cushion. Pot on here to the right corner. Seven. So purposely leaving himself 14. low on this, so in potting it, he can bring other reds into play. Yeah. Yeah, well, 15. he's banging the table. I, n I never liked the run through there. I always prefer to screw back. I feel he got more control over the cue ball. Yeah, that was a, a very un Sullivan, Ronnie Sullivan like shot. Yeah, and I know <coughs> we were talking about it a few moments ago when he played that, but just 
just a few signs to me that he's had it so easy this evening that I think he might have just taken his eye off the ball slightly. Not got that full concentration. Mm, this is a good line. Just short pace to get to the ball cushion. the ball colourful, leaves the cue ball on the ball line rather than the ball cushion. Doesn't appear to be anything that would tempt Chunin to go in for a pot, but with your hand on the table, you're expecting to play a lot better safety shot than Ronnie's. Well, he did have a pot, Wes! Oh, well, 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 well. Ronnie will still have in four. OK, he was running two other reds, but... He'll feel very unlucky there. I mean, it's not as if it went straight in. It won. Well, just the one red next to the black. And not only Thank that you. has it gone in, a red has appeared over this right corner. Well, that's, that's a heartbreaker. It really is. You've just won a frame when you've been really struggling. Then potted a long, great long red that you had to get. And then that happens. One. That was, oh, that was ugly. A Judd Trump. Eight. Nine. Yeah, we were saying how important these frames were. Sixteen. Uh, yeah, just a bit of bad luck. Seventeen. And obviously, you like all things to be equal, but uh, it never is, particularly when you're struggling. Three points to lead. I think he's got a choice. He can go up for the blue, or maybe the red to the left middle will gain position on the black. Whichever he feels is the easier to control the cue ball. Doesn't have to play any cannons. The reds he needs are in the open. Twenty five. Yeah, just a short of pace on this positional shot. Oh, he's going to play a delicate one here through the gap for the black. Blade to perfection. Thirty-eight. Red, colour red. We're getting to snookers required. 
39. And Judd, well, he'll feel unlucky and as well he might. But when you're running into other balls and not much idea where the cue ball's going to finish. But to go in the pocket, very unfortunate. So this red 46. to go 66 points ahead with just 59 remaining. 47. Fifty-two. Yeah, and the, when Judd Trump seen that cue ball go in, he'd have been horrified. But fifty-three. Obviously, because he knew what probably was going to happen. Ronnie was going to come to the table and well, just take all the the points that Judd possibly could have taken. Relentless. 60. This is. And well, he couldn't get the plant, but as you say, Stephen, it's relentless. This is what Ronnie O'Sullivan is doing, what we know he can do. Judd Trump's got to find a bit of that form. It's slipping away. 11 5. It's slipping away, and uh, we're well over the 10 now, so clearly Ronnie is eyeing the finish line 18, and it's creeping ever closer and quite quickly. It's a really cruel game now, isn't it? it, I mean, is. it, it, it we're talking all night about it. He's got the technique. He's not popping a long ball. He goes and knocks one in, gets a cannon off another one, goes in off. And you just know going back to the chair that Ronnie O'Sullivan's going to make a break and win the frame off you. It's a very cruel game. Yeah, the brutality of snooker <laughs> is writ large out here. There's not much you can do when you feel things are going against you, but you can't make things happen in the way that Judd has not been able to do tonight. Uh, and every snooker player that's played professionally or in any you know good amateur or anything around the world has felt that. You know, they know what it feels like. You sit in your chair, you can't do anything about it. It's what makes snooker the unique challenge that it is. You know, when you're in that chair, you can't affect play. You can't do anything about it. When your opponent's at the table, there's absolutely nothing you can do. Well, you can try and make things happen. And uh, a friend of mine has just uh, got in touch with me to say, you remember Mark Selby, 10-4 down? John Higgins came back to win. Uh, it is possible, but tomorrow's another day. However, this last frame of this second session is huge for Judd Trump's chances of doing even that. Couldn't agree with you more. Absolutely. If we get 11-6, long, long way to go uh, up to 18. And tomorrow is another day. We said if he's a little jaded, good night's sleep, come back tomorrow. He is capable of putting together a run of frames against anybody. He is. When Ronnie comes back to the table, I should remind you that the final episode in the series of Muhammad Ali will follow after this evening's session. He was the greatest, of course. Ronnie trying Thank to you, the equal the greatest at the Crucible. Ronnie Stephen Henry. Back to you, Stephen, and to John. Yes, that's what Ronnie will be hoping for. I know he says he's not interested in the records, but uh, it's the only way you leave your mark in life by going in the history books. So, yeah, as I said before, one way or another, Judge just got to try and eke out a frame, but that pot success, it, it's worrying, isn't it? I think you can possibly get through to this red to the right corner. The black, I'm sure, is available to the left corner, but it's fraught with danger. Yeah, but the Judd Trump, who was winning all those tournaments last few years, this was the type of red he was knocking in relentlessly. Big shot. Great shot. Behind. <laughs> but yeah, fabulous pot. 
he's definitely the long pots that he's just rolling in with top spin is a lot more comfortable. You can tell that quite obviously. Yeah, and it is a fact, uh, the more pace you're hitting to a ball, Eight. if you just don't catch the middle of the cue ball, it would just be thrown offline. Nine. He's got to find a way. And he's got a chance now here to take this frame. <coughs> Starting 16. off the evening. 5-3 behind. <coughs> At the moment, he's losing this session 6-2. 70. I don't think he'll be going into the pack here. The red to the, the right of the bunch. I'm going to play a little cannon on that one. He may choose to go into them. But I think, yeah, the more calculated cannon, although he's missed the cannon that he played. He played to go past that red, but 24. always knew he had the red to right middle in reserve. But I'd be pretty sure if he pops this red and gets an angle in the black, he'll be into the bunch next time. 25. Well, unless the red closest to the cue ball still goes, he may play for it, but I think, well, if I may have gone into them, he'll be moving reds this time. This could be 30. the pivotal shot in terms of winning this frame for Judd Trump, if this turns out okay. Surely not. Well, <laughs> I feared for Judd 33. there, although he's not out of the woods yet, he's got no position on the colour. Uh, at one second, I thought the cue ball was going to go off in the middle. Yeah. But he powered the cue ball through, but as you say, he was never guaranteed position. And that look tells you, massive shot coming on up here. He's got to play a pot, you feel. Which one? Which pocket? Nothing easy. Yeah, you think it's got to be brown to this right-hand pocket, bag one, as we call it. Yellow and green, there's hardly any pocket to aim for in the middle. As you say, John, big shot. Widely now, it thank in, you. But it was always in that near jaw. Trump shakes his head again. Had lots of luck with that last shot, but all of it bad, I'm afraid. One. He could play that shot when he powered through the pack 50 times and Landing a colour, probably four to eight of those. The boys in the studio said it can be a cruel game. And even crueler when you think, like Ronnie. Four. Well, the way he's been playing in this championship will probably capitalise and win the frame at this visit. Just having a look. He'd like to get the brown back up the table on his spot. And also to be able to make the black available into both corner pockets. He's looking up to the sky. Don't don't tell me he's not on the brown. He's okay. He's on it. Just have to bend it with a bit of right hand side. A little bit careless, but it's doable. Nine. Ten. <coughs> Six. 
17. Yeah, sure. Yeah, just have a look at this brown and look at the way you're anxiously looking. Is it there? And that probably sums up the way he's feeling. Anxious. Twenty-five. Okay. Not the best positional shot in that red, in all honesty. Just one or two loose shots creeping in for whatever reason. This black to make the points all square. Lost the cue ball again. 33. 34. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Let's look at the scoreboard. Thirteen points to lead now. So these three reds with colours. Forty-six. For the frame. Forty-seven. Well, Stephen, there was nine frames to play 52. tonight. It's looking very much like Ronnie's going to win seven of them. Yeah, it's been another dominant session. And a long list of dominant sessions in this World Championship from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Disappointing one for Judd Trump. He just hasn't turned up. Won the first frame of the evening and then just wasn't able to press on from there. And if you don't put pressure on your opponent, well, this is what happens, they're just going to dominate. Okay, the match is not over. But, but 12 5. Well, Judd Trump's going to have to do something extraordinary tomorrow. And as we always say, someone's got a big lead. He's going to need a bit of help from his opponent. 61. But usually when you say he's got to do something extraordinary, John, normally you've got to have a bit of form to back that claim up, do not you? I don't know whether Judd's got that 66. form to do it. Yeah, I mean, when he played Mark Williams in the uh, semi-final, Mark Williams had played so well in the tournament so far, and that was a great win against Mark. But in the end, he just struggled over the line, having 70. got that 7-1 advantage. He just felt that wasn't going to be good enough here against Ronnie in the final. But I thought being in the final... He'd probably up his game. He's such a talent. But if you let Ronnie O'Sullivan run loose, you're asking for big, big trouble. 81. Go on, man! And he's taken advantage of every mistake that's being made.
good jump at the back from the ball, okay. But Ronnie O'Sullivan once again, absolutely superb. Cue ball of the finest artistry. He's happy, the crowd are happy. End of play on the first day, 12-5. Yeah, looks like the seventh title is very much on and with it perhaps a 21st major in snooker. The stats are extraordinary, but um, is there any way back, do you feel, for Judd Trump now? Uh, because both of you fellas have been in this situation with a mountain to climb going into the second day of a final. Sean? Yeah, I mean, we've said it a few times. He is capable of putting a run of many, many frames together. You know, he can do it, but it is a, a horrific night ahead of Judd. It, it, it's the worst position to be in as a snooker this player. This happened to you 2009 against it John Higgins, yeah? Just wasn't in the game overnight, was too far behind. It, you, you almost feel like not coming tomorrow. And it's now going to be up for Judd and his friends and his family to pull it out of his boots to get him up for it tomorrow. And John, you know the same situation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, was, I wasn't in it at the start, the middle or the end. <laughs> <laughs> against Steve. <laughs> so, yeah, I just got completely, absolutely drilled. So, uh, But he's right, he's quite right, a terrible night's sleep. But uh, listen, the last frame there was massive. It was massive. Yeah. He really, if, he, if he'd have just been the five frames behind, with the, get to 18, there was, a, there was an inkling. I think that's probably done it. The last frame's probably done, mm. done the matching for him. But do you know what? Judd Trump's been unlucky there as well. Mm. He's been unlucky. I mean, Ronnie's been a dominant player, of that there's no doubt. But the in-off, he got punished off the in-off. And then he's had another bad bit of luck there. He's, he's gone in, smashed the reds everywhere. He's finished in the only spot up the table. He, he's got to play the brown. He's had a really bad run of the balls, mm. allied to the fact he's not been at his best. He's been unlucky today. Yeah, there are crumbs of comfort. You know, it's not it's not unprecedented. Seven frames behind. In fact, Dennis Taylor was eight frames behind mm. in a certain 1985 final. So it's been done. But do you feel he's in the kind of form to be able to do this? That's the point. He has been through the event, mm. um, but he hasn't shown that today. No. Uh, he's made far too many mistakes. He's had his chances, but it, you know, to stand any chance tomorrow, he'll have to tighten those mistakes up. I, I'm actually not so sure. I'm going to disagree with you. I actually don't think he's been in the form. I think he's been in match play form. I think his match play has been very good of a high standard, but there hasn't been the, the, the regular scoring blitz that's been in, when you've seen him winning tournaments. I think he's won a lot of matches by using his noggin. And to be honest with you, it's not quite there. He's not firing, he's not got a long game, and his scoring isn't being regular enough. And against Ronnie O'Sullivan, he ain't going to get it done. But Ronnie is now, what, six frames away from a career quest, a mission being accomplished here, John. And he's been so dialed in, he's been so focused uh, in pursuit of this target here this time, hasn't he? Oh, he's been focused from ball one. I mean, I noticed it, right? The, the very first match, he was 3-0 down to Dave Gilbert, and it looked like he wasn't going to bat an eyelid. He looked like he was 3-0 in front. And since that, he was 3-0 against John Higgins, wasn't he, behind that? N nothing. Water off a duck's back. And he's just gone and played his game, and he's dominated everyone he's played. OK, well, they'll be back tomorrow. Sean and John, thank you very much for your company today. I wonder how that uh, Crucible crowd will consider today's events. It's been a strange old day, but Ronnie O'Sullivan certainly is not complaining. Now, get the bank holiday stuff out of the way early. DIY gardening, all of it. Have it all done by about one o'clock for our third session. Because the rocket for all the world looks on the way up to seventh heaven at the Crucible Theatre. I hope you'll share it all with us tomorrow from one o'clock. In the meantime, from the gang here in Sheffield, ta-ra for now.